PSD with you. Tutorials on gaming. In this video, we'll be looking at Enlightenment Desktop 0.22.4 on FreeBSD with a quick install and quick configuration. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, first off, what we need to do is go into SuperUser. And we're just going to search uh, to make sure that we've actually got Enlightenment in the uh, package database. Yeah, there it is, look, 0.22.4. So we're just going to install it using PKG install Enlightenment. You can use parts, of course, but for convenience and speed in this particular video, I'm going to use. Uh, pre-built packages We're just gonna fast forward so we don't have to wait too long Now we're gonna install slim uh, as with enlightenment. It's just pkg install slim and we'll configure slim later to auto start So just yes And that was it. That doesn't take any time at all Now we just make a, an alteration to the dot x in the rc exec usr forward slash local forward slash bin forward slash enlightenment underscore start so start x we're going to test it so on this opening screen uh, choose the language which uh, suits you in this case it's british english and keyboard layout would be uh, uk now you can choose um, tiling computer or mobile. Uh, it's an interesting choice. But I'm just going to stick with the defaults, which is uh, computer. And it tells you uh, at the bottom configuration devices with keyboards. It's just they're basically the same with one or two different altered key combinations. So I'm going to keep it at the default. Right, the next one is an interesting one. It actually asks you to choose. What font size would you like to be displayed? Um, I got a feeling that I should really choose the largest I can get away with, but I think that 1.0 is the best one. Focus, so you can have it old fashioned Unix style or new modern style. So sloppy or um, click, I think that's what they describe it as. And you can set up your different key combinations or your magic key as it was. Uh, oh, I need to sort that one out when uh, we're finished. Turn composite effects on or off. Um, I've got a feeling I should turn them off, but I'm going to leave them on for now. This old computer, the old test machine I'm using, uh, it'll probably struggle. Uh, no, we don't need to check for uh, updates. Uh, taskbar can be added. Yeah, we need a taskbar at the bottom. And that was it. I like the configuration questions at the start. It's really nice. So you got your virtual desktops, uh, your X term, your uh, hmm, okay, whatever that is, calendar and clock. This should be your volume. Your, well, your media player volume, and you choose between keyboard mappings. Okay. Right, looking on the desktop, we have a home folder, which uh, is pretty self-explanatory. you got the root folder for some reason. Uh, just put the home one down there and the root one there. So it looks really nice. It actually works quite well on this old machine. And you got a temporary folder, which is almost like the RAM disk in a way. I do like the way it looks. I like the theming on this. Very nice. Mind you, Enlightenment is known for its um, eye candy abilities. Right, we're going to need to uh, do some basic configuration. I'm just going to add this entry to uh, FS tab. Save that. Just 
mount it. Some programs can get a bit freaky if you don't have that on it. Uh, I'm going to enable DBus. And enable Slim at startup. And now we're going to install a few basic applications, GIMP and Firefox. And LeafPad, which is a basic text editor. so you don't have to wait. Right, we're finished. Now we're going to install some, well, I say extras, but they're kind of um, essentials, really, for enlightenment. We're going to Ikria, 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 I only say Ikria. It's a text editor for uh, enlightenment and some Enlightenment 17 modules, which will work on this one. Right, doing a reboot. And we should have Slim, oh, there we are. Uh, we'll just log in, and it should start up Enlightenment automatically, which is really what we want. Ah, oh, yes, very nice. Yes, it's doing it. And there we are, the Enlightenment desktop. So we'll have a look down at the menu entries. There are, this was a, a clean install of FreeBSD, so there's really nothing added. Everything you see on here is in the uh, Enlightenment packages, uh, except for GIMP and Firefox and LeafPad, which you can see, and a few of the modules which we ordered after, but basically everything is uh, comes with Enlightenment. There's a lot of options which I, I feel is, is unnecessary repetition, really. Um, it's, it's how many different ways do you need to get to your home folder other than the obvious? It's, uh, well, you know, it's, it's this one thing. So there's your different virtual desktops. Uh, again, it's a different way of accessing them. You can do it at the bottom one. Shelves. Shelves sound interesting. I don't know what shelves are. Hmm. Thank you. I'll look at that in a minute. Um... Various knickknacks, yeah, it's already it's already intriguing. There we go. Okay. And yeah, I've not used uh, Enlightenment for oh, it must be twenty years. I think it started in nineteen ninety six. I think the initial project. So I think I remember using this on, um, could have been Debian, I'm not sure. Well, we're going to try this bit, we'll see what it is. It's for, uh, is it for Bryce, I think? I'll uh, click, click. Uh, leave that there. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea what that is. Let's get rid of it. Yeah, I mean it's um, it is gorgeous to look at. It it it's um... right. It was at this point during the uh, demonstration which I realised that the the machine would lock up if I try to access the menu. It doesn't matter what I tried to run; it would always lock up. So after a restart, so you might notice a discrepancy of the time in the bottom, and I try something else on the menu, it would just freeze again. And reboot again, and and it's not really letting me do anything. It could well be that the this machine is really old and the graphics can't keep up with the composite effects. Maybe if I'd had disabled them, it might have uh, improved things. But as it is, um, unfortunately, 
I couldn't get it working. So this is really a case of your mileage may vary. Well, this was my experience of using this on this very old test machine. It could well be that if uh, if you use it in a more modern system with better driver support, then maybe it would perform better. Uh, which is a shame, because I think it's a gorgeous-looking desktop. And um, some of the examples I've seen are absolutely mind-blowing. But in this instance, on this old test machine, uh, I couldn't get anything to work other than freezing up the machine. So um, I can't proceed. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing, as this really helps me help you.